there wasn't a day where I'd uh, at work or at home or anything where I weren't thinking about two-tone you know and, and or looking at a picture of it or something like that you know and uh yeah and it was and it's painful you know <laughs> painful I was just when's my time coming and uh I bet it's painful for the people close to you as well wasn't it that possibly period. yeah yeah I mean yeah I mean my, my then wife you know she she knew of my obsession you know and uh anyway it was um it was a wednesday and i was and i thought i wasn't going to go fishing at all i wasn't going to go there, go at all and you know because of getting ready for france the next day and uh, i thought i might as well go down there for a night and i went down there on the wednesday you know wednesday early evening um by now i was I fished on a swim called the island there was someone on joe's point so i went on the island and uh Baiting up now was like sort of an autopilot, really. You know, I'd, I'd do one rod and second And then real, real sort of, I don't know, my attitude was, you know, just, I, I didn't have no thoughts of two-tone or anything. Just go down and just want to get the rods out there, sit down, and chill out a little bit, you know. And uh, and I always remember it. Me, me, I accidentally picked up a rod that I'd already done. In other words, it already had the four been baited up with four sticks of bread, bread sticks, and uh, and it had the bait in place. And then instead of picking up the right hand rod, I picked that rod up again. Mm -hmm. I sort of I said it's after I'd done the rod, whatever. I thought, oh, it, I've already done that rod. So I reeled it in. I've got a single grain of maize on there, and I went, shush, shush, ah. so I tossed it out there. Just single no grain stick. of maize, no stick, you know. And uh, I mean, it was there and thereabouts where I, you know, and obviously the spread of this, this, the bread would be quite wide anyway. And you were fishing tight on all, f all, f all three rods? Not necessarily, no, no. Okay. No, three, di three different yeah. spots, yeah. Might, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and it's, you know, a friend of mine, you know, uh, Pet Food Paul, come down to see me in the evening and we had a bit of a laugh and he'd been to Le Quay before and we were chatting about Le Quay and everything. And then... Um, and that was it. At some point, I drifted off to sleep, and uh, and I think it was around about five o'clock in the morning. I had a, I had a single beep on uh, on one rod, which caused me to wake up, and I just sat around on the bed chair. And honestly, it was the thickest fog I've ever I've ever fished in. You know, I couldn't see an hand in front of me. And normally, you could you could hear the that because it's where it's it's fairly close to the M20 motorway. You normally can hear the hum of the vehicles on the M20 in the distance and the factories a little bit of noise going like I said work, night work on, in the factories a little bit of work going on in the factory it couldn't hear anything you, you, just nothing it was completely it was actually quite eerie and uh, and I sat there you know sort of and I heard a fish crash out in the sort of vicinity of me uh, you know where I was fishing but I didn't know exactly where because you couldn't see the lake you know it was that thick the fog and uh, but it didn't, sound, it didn't didn't sound like a big fish and uh, then all of a sudden, the, the middle rod, you know, one that had the single grain of uh, maize on it, it just roared off. And I was on it like a shot plan these fish. And I mean, honestly, that, I mean, the lake was really, really weedy at the time, so you couldn't give the fish an inch. Like at one stage, I thought it went round to, to my left and, and I was just, just wouldn't, wouldn't give it any line at all. At, at one stage, it nearly pulled the rod out of my hand. And, Any uh, idea at that point? No, no, none whatsoever. I thought no it was, difference in the fight between you. Not know, uh, got a bit of a lump on the end. There, I think but. on reflection, uh, on reflection, there should have been, but there wasn't. If you know what I mean, because the last thing I thought of it, it was two tone, and uh, I thought it was this. Yeah, this one I'd uh, jump out, which was one of the perhaps smaller commons or something like that. You know, and uh, or even the long common. I mean, because the long common had a re reputation for fighting hard. And uh, and I got it in front of me, and I and I saw just see it turn over, and to, enough to know it was a mirror. Uh, well, there was only three mirrors in in the in the uh, in Conybrook at the time. Which one was two tone, obviously, um, Tom's pet or Scaly, uh, which was fairly you know heavily scaled. Oh no, sorry, there was more than that. Was, you had the friendly mirror as well. But you know, for, for some reason, my head told me that Tom's pet, you know, and. Uh, Anyway, I netted the fish, and there's quite a bit of weed went in the net as well, and it tried to sort of, sort of lift it ashore, and it'd be really heavy. And, uh, and I, I'm, my head's convinced I've got Tim, um, Tom's pet in the landing net, and uh, 
went back to me bed here, got me head torch on, went down there and, and shot me head torch on it, cleared the weed from it and and I, I can remember thinking, I don't even know what Tom's pet looks like because I've never seen it on the bank, you know, and uh, and then I had another, I cleared a bit of weed, I took the hook out, I think, and I looked at it and looked at it again and it suddenly dawned on me. And I can't explain the feeling. It was as if I floated up into the clouds and, you know, uh, it was surreal, you know, it was... And I, I've got to admit, I, 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 I've sacked up the fish, made it safe, and uh, made it safe. And then and I sat back in me, in, in, on my bed chair and just cried. Did you? Yeah, the emotions were sort of, you know, unbelievable, you know. And then, uh, you know, once I was, had a cup of tea, sorted myself out, and I thought... But mixed emotions as well, aren't they? Mixed emotions, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, you know, and the thing is... I think by this time, I think most of the UK cart world knew of my <laughs> obsession to catch that film yeah. because I wrote a diary piece yeah. in, in one of the monthly yeah, magazines. And, uh, and funny enough, the day before, in the Angler's Mail, um, Colin Davison had written his chapter, you know, free, free carp anglers, he, you know, bless him, he respects most or something or other. And, and one was Simon Scott, I can't remember the other one. Uh, the other one was me, you know, f f bloody hell. And uh, and he, and he's you know in the little bit he wrote the la last statement was there'd be a queue as long as whatever yeah. the daily catches two yeah. tone. So that morning, Colin Davison was the first one I I, uh, I rang, mm. and uh, he said I'll be down. He said I'll be down. He said if you wa is it wage yet? I said, no, I, I, it hasn't been wage yet. And uh, then I rang me local mates like Ian Brown and Paul Forward. And they come down. The so, what was the British record at that point? The, the, the British record was Gary, Gary Bates. Gary Bates. Actually, actually, and oh, he hadn't had it claimed at that point, had it? He, he claimed it, but well, hadn't had it. It was a big, yeah. He, he, I mean, Gary Bates, he, he, it was 60, do you know, I can't even think, what, 62 pound, two ounces, I think. So, yeah, do you know what? Me, what was yours? yours? Yours was 61.7, wasn't it? 61 pound, two ounces. Mine was you know, 61.7 when uh, I caught it. Um, so Gary caught it. It was the first UK sixty pound plus carp. Yeah, caught the year before. And uh, so, did so you think then, right? This is this could be. I, this it didn't even enter my head, you know. But, but, but the right, the weight, th the record thing was irrelevant. That, that to me, that was just an added bonus, you know. And I just wanted to catch that carp, you know. And um, anyway, Ian Brown and and. Ian Brown and uh, Kevin Cummings was on there as well. You know, there was two other anglers on the lake, but they were both asleep when I had the bite, obviously. But Kevin Cummings, Ian Brown, and Paul Forward weighed the fish. And we got some weighing pictures on their toe. I have, yeah. Let me get yeah, this. and confirmed. I mean, that, that was a stainless steel. I, mean, I was going to say, there's a good bend in this weigh bar. Yeah, we're we're looking mean, at this now on the screen. Hopefully, Toe can bang that one up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was... <laughs> That's a sturdy looking uh, yeah, bar. Was, you uh, uh, cool, this looks like it hasn't got a lot of give in it. <laughs> no. <laughs> There yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can see the way that's a solid st stainless steel bar that is. And uh, you know, on, on the scales, Permanently, they yeah. both said it's 61 pound, 12 ounces, which is what the scales initially showed, like, you know, and. Uh, so your scales were a little bit out, were they? Yeah, yeah. Are you a digitals as well? Yeah, I use it. It's a real good, expensive set of digitals. Do you as know? Well, what? I don't yeah. know why we don't all use digital. I, it no, it I takes a lot so. of, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a lot of guessing out of uh, weights, doesn't it? That's sometimes. right. Yeah. Anyway, um, Paul, yeah, you know, it was confirmed by those. They they weighed it, and uh, that was what it weighed. And so I was, you know, absolutely ecstatic about it. You know, I've caught two tone, and it's go a on two. Let's see two tone see record weight, and then. Um, where did the old Hawaiian... <laughs> when Paul Forward turned up, I mean, obviously he was asleep in bed when, he, when I rang him and he, his wife came, wife came down there and uh, I think they called in the Tesco's just up the road and she bought this, you know, Hawaiian sort of... I think what they call them now. You know, no, this, I can't. This, like. this pink feathery thing, that, you know. Boa. Uh, they call it, yeah, boa. A, pink, a pink feather boa. And uh, so she proceeded to hang there around the neck. Without the boa. Without but the boa. And... Uh, but a pretty recognisable car. Yeah, that was it. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was just an unbelievable day. I mean, I mean and to be honest with you, uh, you know, everyone made their way home and everything. And, uh, 
and I was set with me and, and my phone didn't stop Brilliant, you know, isn't ringing it? or and I was getting you know phone calls. It's still uh, quite early in the morning by this time, you know. One 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 that sticks in my mind in particular is a friend of mine who used to fish with Arrow with uh, Steve Curtin, Secret Steve, his nickname was. A um, couple of years before that, he caught the British Barbel record out of the River Ouse, and uh, and he used to always say to me, "I can't wait to your names under your names <laughs> under mine on the on the list." what he meant on the British record yeah. list, like obviously a B's before a C. And, uh, and I rang him and uh, his wife used to work night work and uh, and I rang up and his wife answered the phone and I said, is Steve there, Sarah? She said, uh, no, he's in bed. I said, she want, want me to wake him up? I said, no, 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 don't wake him up. I said, Wait, when he wakes up, just say to him, Lee rang, his name is under yours. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. 